Netflix today. It's been uh, rather interesting yesterday seeing the response to, uh, seems like I've been rather inspirational to um, Bin Our Panel. <laughs> and Mark McMurtry has been equally inspired back. Now, if you haven't uh, seen Bin Our's post, uh, go check it out. Uh, I've left links on previous videos and uh, what was it, Oz Fish Keeper? He's been leaving the comment, uh, posting comment. And I tried posting this response from um, Mark McMurkey and um, YouTube kept chewing it up. I think it might be because of um, the parts that they always are talking about pedophilia, pedophiles, and uh, bringing up certain names and things. And I actually thought, ah, oh, that might actually explain why so many of those comments that are made to me, I think that the person that made them has deleted them. No. I think YouTube has deleted them because of all the shit and dribble they put in there. I mean, from what you can see on the first part of it, it's not surprising. Yeah. But uh, they always tend to go on about pedophiles. And yes, I'm going to get into that subject a little bit further on because they're the ones that keep bringing it up. They're the ones that keep accusing mothers of being pedophiles. Are you serious? Do you know what mothers do to people like that? Oh, I think you do. So accusing them. Because there's this thing about where they're putting all this focus on it only exists in the corrupt elite that rule us, you know, the, the matrix makers. It doesn't exist in general society, in cults, occult, in any situation that you might find yourself in in ordinary life. They're putting all the focus onto it. Oh, it only exists at the top levels, and yet they call everybody that disagrees with them a pedophile. Why is that? Because it's it's got to the stage where Someone that goes over the top, protesting too much, it's like, what are you covering? What are you trying to deflect attention from? You know, you're accusing all these high-level elites, you're accusing everyone else out there in society of being one. Is that so when they turn around and accuse you of being one, they, you can go, oh, that's original. Of course you're going to accuse me of being one. And in that, dismisses the fact, well, hey, if you think I am, look at all the posts I do on it. I'm trying to expose it. I've got thousands of them on my page. I am trying so very hard. I come up with the most obscure ones that nobody's really ever seen because that's what I do. I focus on exposing these top level pedophiles. So you don't suspect. Well, could you possibly not be exposing them, but following them? Ah, are you actually participating in the same activities that you're accusing every other member that disagrees with you? I'm talking about member of society. It doesn't matter who it is. If you disagree with any of these, you're going to get called a pedophile. And that way that if you call them one back because you believe they might be, <laughs> they're going to turn around and say, well, that's stupid. No, actually, it's not stupid because there is way, way too much focus on it, way too much stupid accusations against mothers. I mean, calling everyone a pedophile negates the fact that, well, they're all at the top level. Everyone that disagrees with them is all a pedophile. What, are they the only ones on the planet that aren't? Come on. Yeah. Anyway. So, 
This one's uh, Mark McMurtry, Gullum Beer Gutty. Did the previous video where I warned you about using a stolen skin name. I see that you commented under that skin name. That's quite offensive, using that skin name to comment on. I'd actually worry about what you've said when you've used that stolen skin name. You don't actually think that there's, oh, you want to bring it on and laugh my ass off? You have broken tribal law. And it's not the law you talk about as in L-O-R-E. It's L-A-W with a capital L and a all caps for tribal. It's powerful, it's real, and you have been warned. You treat it as a joke, and now you're turning around using that stolen skin name to dribble all this shit. And it's interesting too that some of the points that you bring out, it's like, oh, so there is actually, I can see in this post, a lot of the projection of the illegal activities of the members put onto the victims or past lost investors to make out like they're the ones doing it. Like uh, someone else is a drug dealer now and someone else has um, satanic worshipping pictures. Like this one here, I actually heard about this one, the goat's head that Adrian Brennock had on his as his profile picture and I heard that Gillian Norman had posted that and now he's turning around saying I'm assuming he's talking about where her when he says her camp with goats heads so that's a complete twist and then we get down to the ice part and it's like yeah that's kind of what AB looks like he might be on you know so who who was cooking the ice? I don't think uh, Julia Norman was cooking the ice, nor would be allowing people to do that. Most of the people that have showed up here are not ice freaks. The only ones that would be ice freaks are the ones running the show and ripping people off. That's what ice freaks are good at. But I love it here, Mark, where you go, as the federal court appointed caretaker of the property in administration caretaker you've been living there for how many years rent free freeloading trespassing with um, elders from another tribe trying to stake a claim on land that you can never be sovereign on but then we'll go down to so it's interesting so you were doing ice cooking up there eh? That's interesting to know. So read this because most of the things that he's talking about here, he's projecting onto other people because he knows that he and his mates have been up to him and it's been known to have gone on. It's just the players and who, are, you know, who did what has been changed to suit this narrative that this thief, skin name thief, you're getting your last warnings, mate. That he wants to think that I am so honourable and truthful, believe what I say. Well, let's have a look at this. Busy pasting AB for ripping people off when in fact he paid 500000 out of 1.2 million purchase price. Yet is the only investor who is not seeking restitution. Well, that stands to reason because a bankrupt... If he was to try and get 500000 back for a start, where's your receipts, mate? Because if none of the past lost investors can prove that they paid that, you know, because of your bad paperwork, how are you going to prove you paid 500000 What was that 500000 that got filtered from one account that investors have paid in and then you went and st stuck it in your own account and said, here, use this money to buy and say it's mine? Is that what you did? Because seriously, where do you come up with 500,000? 
but that's also an interesting thing we're going to get into this might be a bit longer this video because yeah what's on the left hand side of the screen I'm going to get into <laughs> so yeah it does stand reason that a bankrupt is not going to turn around and put his name in to say I want that 500,000 back because he's not going to get it back the bankruptcy trustee will get it and it will get distributed to the creditors he won't see a cent of it so duh <laughs> Yeah, as for the rest, go read it and um, have a good old uh, take it all in and uh, absorb everything that he says. Pay attention to everything that he says and who he says is involved too. That's actually quite a laugh. Malignant social tumours like Kiri, <laughs> Churchill. <laughs> Jenny Lundwig and David Vincent. Well, we are social tumours, very malignant. If we are, I'd hate to think what these other people, I don't think they've invented words for that low life yet. In any way. So Mr McMurky is sitting up there rent-free for how many years on, you know, essentially something that has never belonged to you. And in fact, um, hang on, let me get out this term. Yes, I've got this term out of one of the, something I'm going to introduce in a bit, but you all know this term very well, Mark McMurtry. Unjustly enriched when you get something you haven't earned because we know that this is what you've been spooking about you've been treated so unfairly that others have been unjustly enriched at your expense well guess what others have been <laughs> suffering loss for a long time not only at your hands but all your other top level head honcho criminal organisation heads who have been unjustly enriched by taking something you haven't earned. Tell me, where do you earn the money for this? And why would you buy a sports car to keep taking up that dirt road to trash it? Are you a dickhead? Oh, well, that's a redundant question. Of course you are. <laughs> you actually think you're very smart, but you're very dumb. But look down here where he says, this one back in November 2019. He says, yeah, these are my new wills, showing off some other ones. And then he talks here about um, got to get the shit with the old hag sorted about the property, then fix the driveway while the new house is built. Best part, when I gun it up the driveway, it will echo right up the snout of my favourite neighbour, especially at 2 a.m. L-M-F-B-A-O. Well, you know where he's talking about the old hag? That's his wife he's talking about, okay? You ought to hear what people that have actually know Mark McMurtry and have heard right out of his own mouth the way he talks about his wife. She's the old hag. He's got no respect for her. He belittles her and she is Aboriginal. But I suppose you're just going to overlook the fact of how he treats this old hag because he's got this good spiel. So the next part of the development that we saw back in, I think it was Oh, what was it, August, when Max Egan did the video with uh, Gunham, that they were wanting to get the next level of investors in to pay for uh, 28 kilometres of road, which was going to cost a million a kilometre. So that's 28 million they need. Why? So this fuckwit can drive his sports car up the driveway without getting dents in it. Yeah, when I gun it up the driveway. Yeah, but then fix the driveway while the new house is built. 
What new house? Hmm? Don't even own the land. The land is still with the receiver waiting for a purchaser to make settlement. What new house are you going to build? Hmm? But it is back a year ago before all the shit started going south for him, you know. <laughs> but look at what he's got here. Expensive sports cars. Wonder how much that cost. And where did he get the money for that? I don't know. I looked at the OSTF. They're a, um, apparently a non-profit charitable organisation. I dare say that there's been funds that have gone... Um, conveniently poor records that are in accounting there that could never show where they went. There's a lot to get into on the OSTF and how Mark McMurtry and others on that side have been ripping people off. So, and where is the money going? Hmm. <laughs> well, we can see Mark McMurtry doesn't need to buy houses because he's poaching on someone else's land. But, um, he can buy expensive toys for himself. Now, I don't know about you, but I kind of figure that where he got the money to buy these cars, well, I don't know, would it come under unjust enrichment? Do you think he came up with the money himself? Or do you think others came up with the money and it filled his pockets. I don't know. He seems pretty damn cocky, you know. APSIC have been through. The ATO have been through. Yeah, when was that, mate? 2018? 2019? Guess what? This is 2020. And in 2020, you have not only got so much activity on paperwork that can be tied back to all of the members that are known... But you've put out video confessions that you are fully aware you... Well, Adrian Brennock knows he's a bankrupt. Knows he has signed agreements to not speak in public ever again. And I think I've found why. <laughs> Let's have a look, shall we? Oh, before I forget too, Bina Pownall's um, tribal name is not Binam, B-I-N-N-U-M, but Binang, B-I-N-N-U-N-G. So uh, I just wanted to correct that before I went any further. Because um, in the trust accounts associated with um, the, com the failed community of Buller Buller that's now morphing into Nightcap, but, oh, we're not associated, even though it's the same players pulling the strings. I found Global Awakenings Intentional Community. And I thought, oh, because Global Awakenings is associated with the uh, Rothwall trust accounts and all the monies going around. This Global Awakenings Foundation has come up. And we knew that Mark Darwin was involved with it, but had no idea that that was actually the name of the intentional community in Bellingen. Now, this one here, uh, it's so sad to watch this video because it's got... Um, Tammany and Sarah Kirkwood and their three kids in it back in 2013. And it's their vision and dream of the future. This is why so many good people get drawn in to what these people are, are offering because they know what people want and they're using them to draw these kinds of people in. And to also encourage others because you meet people like this you want to yes you want to know people like this that they have got the right kind of philosophy and so they are used to promote the community uh, we've seen on previous videos that um, it went wrong their dream went terribly terribly wrong and they lost all their money 
just like so many others. But the interesting video I watched was this one here, Freedom Summits 2014, Money and Debt with Mark Darwin. So I watched this video and all of a sudden, this familiar, he's a bit fatter here, this is Adrian Brennock. Now look, here's Mark McMurkey sitting there back in 2014. Now, um, this is, I'll leave a link for it in the description because you really should listen to this video and what's been said in it. Because essentially, I couldn't believe the amount of illegal activity that was being promoted as legitimate by these people. And to actually record it is almost um, arrogance to think that they've got it all figured out. Right, now before I get into more of an explanation here, the motto of um, this uh, sales pitch is to outlast, outmaneuver and frustrate and to do that through the legal processes by <laughs> doing these outlandish things. And why I say outlandish is because, well, at about 30 minutes into the video, Mark Darwin starts saying about, well, AB came to us a couple of years ago. I was like, oh, that's interesting. So he came to you a couple of years ago with debt problems, did he? Do tell, please do tell the story. And he does. He offered to AB to tell it for himself, but, um, you know, he, he interjects after, you know, being the... I used to be in a bad position and now I'm on the other side of it and I'm an expert. I can tell you how to frustrate the law processes, the debt collectors. I can tell you how to be the biggest smart ass and do the most outlandish things. And if you succeed, you might end up as lucky as me and this other guy standing next to me, Stuart Jensen, or you could end up in jail because you're playing games on the fine edge of the wedge. You know, the way he describes it as being illegal, <laughs> there's a reason that the laws have a start off with a part that says how to interpret it so that idiots like him can't, along, can't come along and try and interpret it in the way that he does. But if you're sitting in this audience listening to him and not knowing any better, yes, you will believe what he's saying because he's telling you he's the expert because he's worked in debt collection and he knows what it's all about. I mean, uh, Mark Darwin apparently was, um, well, he's been involved, an ex-bankster, as he says down here, and I didn't know which bank that was, but someone said today, and I can't confirm this, Aussie Home Loans. So um, he's turned whistleblower, has he? So basically he's figured out how the banks do it and he's tried to go out there and show other people how to do it, has he? Well, I don't know, but he can come up with lots and lots of ideas. I mean, you can go to a lunatic asylum and you can hear people explain something perfectly well that it makes sense to them and you could almost buy into it if you didn't know reality yourself because people can be convincing when they believe their own bullshit. So I'm going to uh, paraphrase Mark Darwin's paraphrasing of AB's story, right? So when AB in 2014, and this is from the perspective, so let's say 2012. So when AB came to him, he was in debt. He had a 129,000 Amex credit card bill and 12,000 other bill. And it seems like they got their heads together, you know, and said, 
what idea can we come up with? And they came up with this. I think that my accounts have got fraudulent transactions on them. And so the next thing, Adrian Brennock goes to the cops and he says, I believe these have got fraudulent transactions on them and I may make a claim on my insurance and I need a police report for that. So, and this is as the story goes, I find this a really big stretch, but anyway. So as he may make an insurance claim and he believes that all this money he spent on his Amex and other bills may have fraudulent transactions on there. <laughs> okay, yeah, I know it's a stretch, isn't it? You spend all this money and then you're trying to turn around and say, oh, it's fraudulent transactions. I didn't spend this money, someone else did. I mean, seriously, yeah, but the bullshit gets better. The story does. So he goes to the cops and hands over these these bills and says, you know, I think there's fraudulent transactions. And then it gets recorded with a case number and it's a criminal matter then. So then he goes to the FOS, which is the Financial Ombudsman Service, and he made a complaint to them claiming the criminal complaint that he just made that he may claim his insurance back on and saying that there's criminal activity involved and that essentially in doing that it halts the ability of the creditors to chase him for the money until the matter is settled. So after he's made the complaint to get um, Amex and these other creditors off his back while it's investigated with this criminal complaint that he presents his invoice statements and says these might have fraudulent things on there and I need a report number so because I might make a claim. Why? To write it off? Yeah, he actually says in here he's written off 300000 this way. So... He started off with 129,000 and 12,000. That's not 330,000. So he's really had a fat old time of it. Booking up money and claiming fraudulent transactions, getting it declared as a criminal thing, making a complaint to the, the FOSS, which is the Financial Ombudsman Service, Ombudsman Service. And then he goes to the COSL and complains to them. I don't know who they are. And while these two bodies investigate this, Adrian Brennock goes to his lawyers because he's got so much bloody money to pay for a lawyer to go and get all this done. I mean, we know how cheap they are, don't we? So all these lawyers that he goes gets, so he, go gets, he goes and gets the lawyer and writes both the cause and the FOS and the creditors letters and says that this is a criminal matter now and that they have to cease. And the matter is investigated and both apparently the FOS and the cause came back and said that he is no longer liable. And Amex wrote him a letter, said, forget the debt, and sent him a new platinum card. Now, <laughs> yeah, that's the story. Now at about 32.30 in, AB says that he's written off about 330,000 this way. So this is back in 2014 where he's written off 330,000 of his own debt by starting it off as a fraudulent claim and a criminal action and then this is why they say outlast, outmaneuver, frustrate because if you send back as they explain in this video you get a lawyer's letter or a, you know a threatening debt collector's letter and you respond to that and you've got to play ball backwards and forwards so it's outlast outmaneuver and frustrate. This is their motto. 
remember that because they're doing that at nightcap too outlasting outmaneuvering and frustrating but really how many dollars can you have at your disposal now how many more people are going to invest that you can fill your pockets up with go and pay lawyers to fight all these bullshit arguments for you because you know you're relying on the fact that nobody can afford the expensive lawyers that you can that your lawyer can out talk the other lawyer well yeah sorry but you know in this video itself there are things in here I could pull out as evidence for fraud deliberate fraud and what he's talking about I mean going to the cops and making a complaint could you imagine it you get your credit card statement you've booked all this stuff up on it and you think you know what I'm going to turn around and I'm going to claim that there's fraudulent transactions on here and I'm not going to pay it didn't he try doing that with perpetual trustees in the house took out a loan and said you know what, I, um, I'm going to try and claim sovereignty here and I'm not going to pay for it. And he lost. I mean, that evidence, yes, evidence is out there. He lost. I'll leave links for that too. Um, and if I forget to leave them in the um, description below, please uh, comment and I will do it. Because there's a lot of things that I want to cover and bring into play to get people thinking about here because back in 2014 Adrian Brennock brags about pretty much ripping off 330,000 that he spent so I, I can understand why the ATO came down on him and I can also understand why he signed never to speak in public again agreements with several departments because essentially what he's doing here is so misleading to people and it look if you do not have the expensive lawyers to deflect the shit that you will get yourself into if you try to do what they've done you could end up in jail you know and the thing is that people think that because they get away with things for a period of time that it will never catch up well you know what everything catches up sooner or later when you're younger you may not understand that but as you get older you realize you know what it does sooner or later and it may not be in a way that you even recognize that you paid for it but let's say, for example, that you listened to Adrian Brannock in, back in 2014 and you're sitting in this audience. One of these people could well be sitting in jail right now because they followed this man's advice. That's how bad it is. That's how misleading it is. In this video, AB claims all to to know all about you know debt collectors and he's had dealings with them and he, he actually makes like it sound like he was a debt collector and you know I actually was a debt collector so I was listening to what he was saying and I'm thinking you know what um, I think that someone has had more experience with debt collectors that knows how to fight them than rather being one themselves but putting himself across as making it sound like he used to be a debt collector so he knows is kind of misleading because I don't think he's ever been one I know that uh, apparently from the video that Mark Darwin says Stephanie Humble used to be a debt collector so um I don't think it's in this video it's in other videos yes I've been doing a bit of research because it's hard to find anything on M Mark McMurtry and Adrian Brunock because they've both done so many bad bad things 
that the government doesn't like them, the courts don't like them, and most of the thinking people on the planet don't like them. They see them for what they are. But, you know, it's when they go into court with their expensive lawyers, they're not seeing them for how they are. And that's been in the past. In the past, there was an abundance of evidence that has never been presented with the charges and allegations that are going to be brought forward. Now, they think that because, you know, I don't rush. When I set out to achieve something, I intend to achieve results. And that's actually what being a debt collector at Dun & Bradstreet taught me to do. I control the outcome. And I control that outcome by the quality of work and research and substantiating evidence that I put forward to get it all going in the first place. And while I'm doing that, I'm having more information brought in, more substantiating evidence. So until I've finished crossing the T's and dotting the I's so I can just hand it all to them on a platter and say, look, it's too easy. I've even shown you who, where, how, when and why. Just go do your job. And if they go, oh, well, we can't prove it on this, say, look, take your pick of one of the other 35 other charges there, you know. Take your pick of which one that you want to send them to jail for because I don't intend to rush this and fail, you know. And I have been criticised in the past because I don't work at other people's timetable or... Uh, as a single person working to achieve these things, yeah, with carpal tunnel, writing and typing is a bit of a problem too. So, you know, I push my body to achieve these things because I want to achieve them and I uh, will not put anything forward unless I am happy that I have substantiated my allegations. And if that's not a people's timetable, well... That's not something I'm going to apologise for. You want results? Well then, let's not do what's been done in the past. Because if that was going to work, it would have worked. You do not repeat things that fail. No, I'm not going to give them one drop at a time. I'm going to give them a whole bucket full. And then, that it's like when you could take thing, anything to court. If you only go in with one charge, and it's a higher charge, they like to actually back it up with a lower charge, just in case they can't prove the higher charge of that offence. They can still get them on the lower one. But if you only go for the high one and say, yep, it's all or nothing, well, that's what you've wound up with. Nothing. Don't intend to end up with nothing. It's fine, you can't get them on the, the top charge. Plenty of others to pick from. And yes, they can be substantiated. Now this little guy over here, Mark McMurkey, he actually thinks that because I am doing my due diligence and he doesn't know the evidence. Oh yes, he does. He knows a lot of it that's been brought out. He knows this guy is a bankrupt. He can't even deny it. But he's, he comes out with things and says, oh, because people don't answer your questions, you know, they've got to be lying. Well, answer the question, Mark McMurtry. Go on, deny Adrian Brennock is a bankrupt. Go on, deny you don't know it. Deny you haven't been filling your pockets up with his for years. Go on, deny it. He's just a silly bugger that started it all off by going to the cops and saying, oh, guess what? These transactions on my credit card are fraudulent. What a fuckwit. And now he's standing there presuming to tell other people he knows how to do it right. Ah, oh, seriously, if you do not want to go to jail, do not follow the advice of this man. I mean, yeah, you just cannot... And you know the interesting thing is here, see this little one down here, 
This is um, Samantha Backman. Now, she's a comedian. She did a, um, a video at the Freedom Summits, and I nearly wanted to vomit. Here she is trying to present New Age information and be a comedian. It was one of the worst things I've ever seen. But um, there's a couple of stages here. She's sitting there. She's looking like she's lapping it all up. And the whole audience laugh. And then she noticeably laughs about five seconds later. And it's like, oh, wake up, you drongo. Yeah, it's like all this talk is mesmerizing people into this bullshit. At the end of it, they go, well, that sounded like it made sense and it worked for them and it's, so why can't it work for me? Yeah, I got all these debts too that I could look at and go, hey, you know what? I think that uh, my credit card has got fraudulent transactions on it. I'm going to go to the cops. I'm going to bring it up as an insurance claim. I'm going to write to FOSS and COSL. I'm going to get expensive lawyers. We're going to, you know, spend thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars in lawyers' fees to send letters backwards and forwards to get a letter to say, I don't know that anymore. But I might actually owe as much in lawyers' fees. Yes. How many, like, even just to get a lawyer to answer you, uh, a simple, you know, paragraph in a letter is going to cost you a hundred and something dollars. How much do you think it costs to go fight this backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, and then end up in court over it? And then, oh, I won. Seriously, it would cost more than the debts themselves. <laughs> but you're going to believe it because this guy's standing up here telling you he's done it. Well, it, no, he's actually standing up here telling you a story. And he could tell you any story he wants. Doesn't make it true. That's where you've got to do the listening and say, well, hey, something doesn't sound right here. You do need to listen. So back in 2014, none of the lost investors that I started off investigating had even been hurt yet. But there was already a trail of hurt people. And that comes from... Mark McMurtry's failed OSTF, his failed sovereignty, getting donations from other people, getting drummed out of towns and getting drummed out of tribal lands, never to set foot on again. He wouldn't dare. And again, I'll remind you, Mark McMurtry, get rid of the stolen skin name. You're on a timer, mate. You want to sit back there with your big fat gut and think that it doesn't apply to you? These guys actually do think that they can argue their way around anything. Anything. They can't. They really can't. And it's caught up with AB more than once. But yet he's going to stand out here as an expert telling all these people, yeah, and... But actually, give Mark Darwin his credit, he did say that, you know, it might not always work. You know, it doesn't always work. So that's kind of like saying, look, if you go to jail because you follow our advice, we did give you that, you know, warning. We did say it might not work for you. But we're going to stand up here and promote to you like it's pretty much 99.99% guaranteed that it will work. Even though 50% of the time he admits, hmm, maybe it might work. Depends on your personal approach. Because he mentions one guy and his approach and it's like, yeah, that was brilliant. He succeeded. This guy over here, he succeeded too. You won't see the ones that failed because... They're in jail. Yes, you don't put your failed uh, ones up there. You only put the ones that have so far remained ahead of the law. And when I say ahead, it will catch up. Because what they've essentially done is borrow money and then turn around and try and argue over interpretation 
under bullshit clauses of equity and oh what's this other one they talk about unjustly enriched these dicks are saying that well i suppose banks are unjustly enriched by what they do i would not disagree with that but are they not unjustly rich enriched too how do they afford what they have been able to pay for by going to the cops and saying oh i believe there's fraudulent transactions here now it's a criminal case now it, it can't be acted against to collect on me you know i'm so smart so this is 2014 and the nightcap or bulla bulla community that it was started getting involved with these two 2015-16. This address here is commonly associated with directors, secretaries and principal places of business and things like this. And the main name that keeps coming up associated with this address is Adrian Peter Brannock and Christy Ann Brannock. Uh, Nyepi is registered here as are the directors. Everything about Nyepi is registered here. And it's also interesting to note that uh, Rainmaker Developments is also registered at this address. And uh, Rainmaker Developments is the majority shareholder in Mount Burrell Commercial. Isn't that interesting? So I showed in previous videos that Adrian Brannock was made a bankrupt in 2018 and he was under service of that bankruptcy notice before he was made bankrupt and they do take the date prior to then so that's why I'm not giving a confirmed date of his bankruptcy because I don't know when he was served the original notice nor the time frame he had to satisfy the debt before action could be taken against it. Let's have a look at this place that this bankrupt man lives in. Now if you go onto Google Earth and you have a look around, you will see it's a huge property. You can't see the house from the road. There's uh, a whole plantation of something that's been put out the front. Pretty big place, isn't it? Lovely. Wow. So this was listed in July 2016. And it went up for sale and it was sold. And according to this, it shows that since 2016, it's been rented for $670 a week. Are you kidding me? Right. You know, before the um, real estate bubble started to get bigger and bigger and bigger. There was one thing that you could always rely on when looking at the price of something. Like you have a look down here. It's not going to, it doesn't tell you that it doesn't have any property sale history on this one. But look here at the estimated value. Um, uh, Aiden, 850000 to 1.4 million. Now, as I had discovered years ago, it generally worked out that rent, if you took off all those zeros, that's what rent would be. But that was till, you know, properties went up, real estate agents, you know, wanted more money, took over more control and needed their bit out of it. So renters had to pay more and then you know, it just kept pushing up and up and up and up the price, way beyond value. So if we go by how it used to work before things went all crazy, let's look at the bottom end of the scale, 850. So let's say that back in 2006, 2016, 
it would have been worth anywhere from 850 to one point, um, 1400 a week. And even if that was by today's standards in 2020 and we're taking this value, you would still expect at least 850 to 1400 a week as a rental equivalent. But it would be more because the rents have gone up, not down. So what is the rent that this bankrupt is supposedly paying? Uh, I think that, you see, Christy Brannock was associated with Boundary Properties in Toowoomba. And this company is said to owe money to Wollumbin Horizons uh, in liquidation. Uh, but it's been deregistered. Now, it was said to have been owed. So Christy Brannock's company lent her husband, Adrian Brannock's company, $154,000. But for what? But anyway, I'm getting a bit off track there. So you can see that uh, in 2016, the rental price is 670. So, and it would actually show that uh, the address for Adrian Brannock started at certain times to be at this address. But what I actually believe is that uh, the property has, like his wife is not the only one dealing in property sales. There are other members that also deal in property sales. And uh, yeah, I don't think I'm going to get into this in this one because it's a little bit difficult to tie in at this moment as far as I'm talking about other things. So I can uh, show you in another one. So if we look at this place that it is valued at what I've showed you already, Showing you the pictures. Go on Google Earth, type in this address. You'll see it's a huge property. You can also go to the uh, Gold Coast City Council, type in that address and get up a lot of information about that and see how big it is. It is not a small property. It's got acreage. Uh, it's going to be worth more than 600 odd bucks a week. So you've got a bankrupt developer of nightcap on Minjimbu that uh, uses this address said to live there and uses it as the registered and principal place of business for Nyepi as well as for night um, rainmaker developments major shareholder in the Mount Burrell commercial now I've brought up the fact about how he moved those shares in Nyepi to his wife's name about six days before his final bankruptcy hearing. So it's a very deliberate action to move those shares into his wife's name. And the fact that they exist still as Nyepi and Christiane Brannock is still in charge of those shares means that the ATO and other creditors were not made aware and it was not seized in the bankruptcy. So. They can protest all they want about how slow I am in bringing forward all my evidence, but it's going to get there. Now, if you go to um, Mark Darwin's channel and have a look at all the Freedom Summit videos, you will notice there are quite a few Nightcap on Minjimbo members there. For a start, there's Tyler Tolman, Mark McMurtry, and Max Egan. Yes, good old Max Egan, the, the quiet achiever. We haven't brought him much into it because, uh, you know, he's been, uh, well, shall we say, otherwise occupied. He's trying to tell all the truthers how to be truthful because I've got a fake name, nobody knows my real life or story, only what I manufacture to tell them because I'm a fake, I can't stand in my own truth, in my real name. <laughs> oh, I love the people too that come on and say, oh, I can't stand in my name, oh, I have all my life. I've never represented myself as anything other than me. 
I don't have to hide behind fake names. And if you think calling a channel is a fake name, you're an idiot. You know every channel I've got's got a different name. I've got plenty of bitchute channels too, thanks to Max Egan and his buddy Ray. So uh, they've all got different names. It's just what I thought of at the time. You know, sometimes it might be after a saying or something like that. But you know what? It's not my name. It's never meant to represent my name. You know? <laughs> so if anyone thinks that I've been calling myself crystalline geometry, you're a fuckwit. Well, I was going to give more, but uh, I think I might wrap it up there. It's going to be long enough. And if you um, wanted to go to this Andrew Brennan's logbook, um, log on, on Facebook, it's AB here again, you know, Adrian Brennan. Have a little bit of a look at what he's got going on his channel on channel Facebook page it's quite interesting because you know uh, anyone with uh, half a brain knows that flat earth and concave earth are psyops just like Scientology they're all manufactured bullshit anyone that gives any time to them is supporting bullshit and distractions from the truth and it's funny how many truth is now actually claim to be flat earthers those controlled narratives like this guy Andrew Brennan now the interesting thing about this profile is um, that apparently it goes back to 2014 isn't that a coincidence eh? AB also says that back in 2014 that's when all the trouble started well this bankrupt man in 2014 with all the shit he was saying to these people not surprised seriously <laughs> it's a pity they didn't live up to the agreements that he signed where he said he'd never speak in public again because the, the people of the world would be so much better off if they didn't have to listen to his version of insanity flat earth he supports flat earth but yeah, a lot of uh, the grotesque stuff he's got on here, uh, if it can actually be quite informative. There's so many things that I have not seen those disgusting pictures of pedophiles and everything. There's lots of stuff on pedophilia on here that he's drawing attention to and satanic rituals. Again, this is, I believe, are you drawing attention to it saying that it's only the elite that are participating in it so that people think that ones like you don't? Hmm? Because I tell you what, there's some weird shit that I've heard going on. And not only weird shit, but really, really wrong shit. Watch your kids. Do not leave them around any of these seedy fucking looking... Ugh. Sorry. Every time I mention this subject, I get a little bit... Um, I want to rip them apart. So here we are. Child murdering pedophile. This is the accusation against Lady Gaga. I dare say she's perhaps witnessed these kinds of activities. She's a victim now, perpetrator type thing. But let's look up here where... When I first saw this one, I thought, hey, that looks like Iron Man. Is it? Is it you, Iron Man? <laughs> but anyway, this is where he, um, back in April. See, yes, I'll explain the point about um, what I started before. Back in 2014, he had this profile and it disappeared. And it seems like maybe March, April this year, it's been reactivated again. Uh, you try and go further past March posts and this page will just freak out and shut down and go, oops. Now, I've never come across that on anyone else's page, but on this one I have. And no matter how many times you try it, it will do the same thing. It's like it gets to the beginning of the memory 
knows there's more behind it but it can't see it and it doesn't know what to do so it goes oops <laughs> so he got motivated perhaps back in March April and I suppose it was with the advent of COVID that he thought oh you beauty this will be something we can hold against the matrix and we can draw people in this is a good sales pitch so let's start off with how he talks here about um, Gillian Linda Norman and the judgment that was made to pay 400000 it's up here 600000 plus. I don't know how he changed that, but hey, he's good at making stories. And you know what? Judgments can be easily overturned. <laughs> there is no statute of limitations on overturning a bad judgment when a crime has been committed. Especially with the ATO involved, there is no statute of limitations. In fact, I read something the other day. It took them 19 years, but they got this bastard, eh? <laughs> so once they're after you, they're after you. And I think they're after you for more, Mr. Adrian Brennock. I think you pissed them off enough when they made you bankrupt. And I think they'll be glad to see that... Um, even though you think that there's no evidence, you've provided an abundance of it in 2020. And a lot of it out of your own mouth. So, um, yes, he started reposting back in um, March, April. And, yes, with all the stuff he gets into. Now, as you go through, you can see then for quite a few months, it's almost like he's posting every you know, 30 minutes, he's, you can almost see he's living on Facebook. And I know this because I see my daughter's stuff and other people's stuff and it's like, wow, do you ever get off Facebook? <laughs> you know, unlike me that, you know, my profile, you might have a post that I've put a link in there so that I know where to find that link later on. And, um, yeah, it's not, I'm not posting it to talk to anyone or for any particular reason. But, uh, well, yeah, I do have um, reason, but you go through and you look at all of the stuff. There's a lot of flat earth stuff. Uh, there's a lot of pedophilia stuff. There's a lot of constantly bringing out that to reinforce the, the think in your head that these pedophilia crimes only exist within a corrupt level that they explain it to exist in. Now, the, um, there are how many suppression orders for pedophilia in Australia against Australian citizens that are in high-ranking positions, officials, justices, and things like that. The justice system participate in suppressing evidence about naming pedophiles. So I would not be surprised that well they also participate in the fact is that it's a very oh, too common you hear of mothers that they know they fear for their children and they go to the police or the relevant you know people to please help me i think my children are being molested the next thing the woman loses custody of a kid she's under every investigation and the kids go into the hands of the very people that she is worried about is harming them. And the court allows this. You know, it's almost like no woman can accuse a man of molesting a child because it's just, oh, you're being nasty, it's spiteful. Seriously, don't we owe it to our children to take them seriously as allegations and then dismiss them? Sure, there might be people out there that have done this and that's their own crime, something that karma will come back and pay them for. But there are too many that are not. Too many that are going back into the hands of the people that shouldn't have them. And too many that have access to their children because the courts will not believe one single word. And why is that? 
Well, these guys would tell you because they're part of the corrupt elite system. The courts are up, corrupt. The politicians are corrupt. So they know the courts are corrupt, yet they use the courts all the time, knowing they're corrupt, to achieve their own successful outcomes in that corrupt system by their own corrupted means and oh look I'm going to come into court and explain bullshit today well Mark McMurtry down here has done that too many times a court will not hear any application from him whatsoever in Australia ever again so unless you've got a complaint against Mark McMurtry they don't want to hear from him and I suppose that comes back to uh, their philosophy that they promote in here about um, uh, what is it? Uh, hang on. That's the same. Outlast, outmaneuver, frustrate. Well, Mark McMurtry, <laughs> gun and beer gutty, did you outlast, outmaneuver? And frustrate the courts? Ooh. Yes, you frustrated them. But you didn't outlast them. You didn't outmaneuver them. And now you're suffering the consequences. Well, I actually wouldn't like to be in Mark McMurtry's position. Because not only can he not make an application to any Australian court... He's just offended tribal law and not the law they promote, L-O-R-E, the real one, L-A-W. Tribal law that is coming for recompense. You have been given warnings and you are not taking it seriously. You think this is all a joke? Go ahead and put out another post and make some other acidic comment and talk about how everybody else are pedophiles because, and hey, please, project some more of your activities onto others so we can get more of a look of what you've been up to. Because making ice on the property? Yeah, that's interesting, isn't it? That's a confession. So, um, if that was true about Julia Norman, how come she's not in jail for making ice? Yeah, so the basis of the making ice story, um, hmm, we'd have to uncover the truth a little bit behind the story that they want you to believe to get to the grain of truth to find out what the real truth is. Because the grain of truth is, yeah, there was ice manufacturing going on there, eh? Nice to know. Good to know. That can go on my list. Drug dealing as well. And go ahead and blame it on somebody else. You've got all of these people that you project your own actions onto. So go ahead make some more accusations against other people so we can see what else you've been up to. Because all you've got to do is peel back and confirm that this activity has been going on. And then, well, you are in charge. You admitted that you are the administrator. You are responsible for what goes on there. And you brought the police in, but they didn't arrest anybody? Hmm, that sounds interesting. Very interesting. What, you just got them to escort them off the property, did you? <laughs> and you didn't name them either. So they must be friends of yours that got escorted off the property because you didn't name them. Because you name everybody else to want to put them in there against things that you want to say they've done. Because, you know, it comes out of your mouth. It's gospel truth, isn't it? Wow, well, I tell you what. If you did believe in the Bible, you would never want to swear on it. You'd get struck down dead on the spot. 
You just can't tell that many porky pies and get away with it, you know. Anyway, I said probably ages ago I was going to finish it up there and I didn't. Uh, but I think I've covered a lot of areas, given you something to think about today anyway. Think about what you um, listen to. Go and read um, Binham's post. And gonna be got his response. Ask why so many things that comes out of this foul mouth little man that uh, YouTube won't let him post the comments. He's censored because he's got such a gutter potty mouth. And yes, watch this because it starts off with Mark Darwin but it gets into AB. He likes to take over the show. And, yeah, when it comes to dribbling bullshit, he's got his own particular brand of con that he mesmerises people with. Like, seriously, Samantha Backman? I was embarrassed when you laughed five seconds later. Oh, wow. How slow are you? <laughs> Sorry. Shouldn't be unkind. But hey, watch her Freedom Summits video. She takes the piss out of everybody and crosses the line. And you know what? When the crowd goes silent on some and she bombs out with the jokes, I thought, yep, you're pushing it too far, girl. You're not as funny as you think. Yeah, you can have a laugh about one thing, but... To actually try and bring in some serious information and knowledge through what she's done, I actually found it <laughs> uh, a really long, boring comedy show. That's all I thought of it. I didn't learn anything from it other than, well, there are flakes that started long before the flakes I met back <laughs> in the snowflake generation that come out. Anyway... I'm going to leave it at that. Say goodbye and catch you next time.